everybody, and welcome to the first of its kind. This is the Tile Nation Sessions. What are the Tile Nation, Nation Sessions? Well, uh, they are interviews, a series of interviews we are doing with tile contractors and tile professionals, industry professionals. We want to connect the industry and get to know one another and share our stories. We want to have an enjoyable time. Um, of course, as you're seeing, we can use these, this room to bounce around from table to table. And so we're going to have a short interview with Mike, uh, Mike Whalen now. Uh, and then after the interview, we're going to have about 25, 30 minutes and, uh, to bounce around and continue to network. And then we're going to interview Shannon Huffstickler from, from Schluter. And uh, before we get started, um, if anybody has questions, put them in the general chat box and we will, uh, we will get to those at the end of the interview for Mike. Um, and Mike is, Mike is uh, anxious to share his knowledge and share his passion for the industry and his story. And that's really what we're here to do. So I want to thank, um, I want to thank Laidacre International for sponsoring today's event. All right, so we are ready to go. I just wanted to hit record. These sessions are being recorded so that we can share them on, on YouTube uh, at a later date for everybody who, who can't make this time. So Mike, first of all, thank you so much for joining us and helping us out and being in here. And I'm, I'm really curious and anxious to hear your story. We had a great conversation the other day. We spoke for the first time. Can you introduce yourself and give us the, the 300 foot overview of who you are and how you ended up in the tile industry. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, you know, first, thank you for the invite and to be here today. It definitely put a uh, bounce in my step, a little excitement yeah. from, you know, being um, shut down like many other people for the past three weeks with everything that's going on. And, you know, everybody's health and well-being right now is top priority. So it's understandable. Um, so being here and being able to share in the industry, just very excited to do it because it, it is a passion and has been for many years. Um, you know, my background or my start was in uh, trade school. I started in 1990. Okay. So we're talking 30 years ago. Uh, always had a passion from a young age that I can remember. So I just wanted to pursue learning more about the trades. So in trade school, it was a general um, you know, learning about an overview of many aspects of the trades and construction. Uh, shortly after high school, um, I did go to college for a little bit, um, but I was friends with some other people that had construction companies sure. that kept me busy over the summer. What did you go to so, college for, Mike? I'm sorry? Well, what did you go to college for? So I went for criminal justice because that okay. was my second passion. Okay. And I wanted to get into law enforcement. My grandfather was um, a police officer in New York City. Okay. That's where I was born. Um, so that was another passion of mine. And, and you know, as many people know, uh, even 30 years ago, they were trying to talk me out of getting into the trades because it wasn't consistent. It wasn't steady, wasn't reliable. But that depends, as we know, as far as the individual and the company that you're, you either have, you're running, um, or you're a part of. So I just kept pursuing it because I saw opportunity. I enjoyed doing it. Worked for a couple of um, local uh, construction companies, doing commercial construction, doing residential houses, new homes. Um, and just, you know, as opportunities came through, I uh, was able to go from different companies and learn more as I went. Um, I did some land surveying for a while, just trying uh, different things as the years went on. And then um, I did hook up with a, a um, remodeling company and I, I started getting more into the focusing on the residential yeah. and expanding again uh, my knowledge and trying to learn as much as I could. So long story short, I did go out and start my own business because I felt, and we talked about this the other day, that, um, you know, I felt confident in what I was able to do. And being naive, I thought since I knew how to um, do the work, yeah. that meant I must be 
able to have a successful business. Common story. Right. Yeah. Right. Common story. Um, and I, of course, was able to be um, busy and get work because I was enthusiastic. I did know how to do the work, but when it came down to the other aspects of owning a business, um, you know, doing marketing, estimating, bookkeeping, um, you know, that was a whole nother world that I wasn't familiar with and I didn't have the right guidance at the time. Yeah. Um, so I spent close to four years on my own, just trying to figure it out. It was um, growing pains. Um, I, you know, I did have success along the way. I did stay afloat above water, but it was tough. Yeah, We didn't have a lot of what you're offering now. You, you know, you have these podcasts, you have these networking groups. You can easily bounce off information off each other that are in the industry, which is a huge help. It accelerates you through um, where I was lagging. Yeah. Because, you know, there was books, there was magazines that you can read. But right now you get that instant um, information from people that have learned, um, you know, from all over the country, all over the world. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't have that access almost 20 years ago. Right. So I, I spent my time learning the business end of it, but just didn't, um, you know, at the same time I was working. And as people know that you spend all your day working and then you have to, work on the business yeah. and get better you know, website and so on. So then um, I was approached by the company I work for now. It's a remodeling company and they were recruiting people that had their own business because they wanted to join forces in our Smart. area yeah. with other like-minded people to, um, you know, if that's what they were looking for. Someone that had their own business was familiar with the business to bring on board because they were scaling their company. Yeah. So I've been with this remodeling company uh, for 18 years now, since 2002. Okay. And um, that's where my tile experience began. I would dabble in it here and there uh, with some small jobs, but they focused a lot more on the tile industry because of bathrooms. A lot of our work is bathrooms and kitchens. Yeah. We do other things beyond that you know, decks, siding, roofing, windows, but- a, What's a, what's the uh, name of that company, Mike? Our company is DBS Remodel, DBS. DBS. So it was shrunk down from Duchess Building Specialists. Okay. We just shrunk it down to DBS Remodel. And um, the company itself has been in business for 34 nice. years. So it has that longevity, the owner, uh, I'm a, so that's I'm an employee now. So a lot of, we talked about that yesterday. A lot want to go from the employee position to the owner position because you think you can make your own hours, make your own schedule, and make as much money as yeah, possible, yeah. right? And you're restricted as an employee. So you are to a point, depending on what company you work for. I just saw an opportunity to learn a ton more working here for this company. Um, and a lot more opportunities uh, to take advantage of uh, as far as, and that's something else I know we talked about is being uh, multi-dimensional, not one dimensional. If all you do is one thing, you're going to be restricted to yeah. that. So where, um, where do you, where do you find your passion to kind of keep things fresh uh, working for someone and, and keep, you know, keep your drive up because that's what a lot of employees suffer from is having that drive. Well, I, I do credit it to the owner of the company kind of steps back. So that would be kind of an ad, uh, advice you can give to owners, sure. this owners. You know, they, he recognizes that he wants to hire people that could be better than him in areas than Smart. he is. And I see it that way at, as an employee, as a project manager. I still do the hands on. I still have the bags yeah. on per se but I manage the, the project. So when I bring in other employees under me, I have the same mindset that these, even the, the younger generation coming in, we're not going to tell them, Hey, this is the way it's done. It's our way or the right. highway. If they have new uh, set of eyes on things, new techniques, new things they want to try. We welcome that. It keeps it fresh. It keeps the enthusiasm up. 
because people feel that they have more ownership in a company. Um, the owner can get excited because he sees that his employees have ownership in what he's wanting to expand and get better at. So it works on, on both ways, and we see that. Uh, and that's how I've kept my excitement up because he's allowed us to go out, be a representative of the company as we are doing, as I'm yeah, doing now. That's nice. An employee, um, any kind of networking um, events that I can be a part yeah. of for the company because I know it's going to help our company um, in the long run to generate work, and that's going to help the employees. So what we do is we try to explain that to our employees as well. We have our company meetings. The owner isn't there yeah, yeah. on these meetings. The full company meeting is yeah. there. But on the uh, employee, we call it our production meeting. So we have all our employees in. And I've just asked him years ago if I can run the meetings. So now I have just the employees discussing what we can do to get better Um in the field, uh, whether it's ideas with products, tools, techniques, different things that different employees are, are looking at, who we, you know, we discuss these different um, groups on yeah. Facebook, Tile Geeks, GTP, uh, what we take away, which has been huge because we got turned on to that yeah. years yeah. ago. And just sharing the knowledge, just like we're doing here well, I tell, today. Yeah, and, and I tell you what, Mike, you know, I appreciate you sharing your uh, your story. I've got one more question for you, but before I do, I just want to tell everybody in the audience that if you do have a question for Mike or, or, or even myself, uh, go ahead and type it in the chat box there, and then I'll be able to uh, address that after I ask Mike this uh, last question here. You know, I, 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 I really enjoyed your story, and... and um, hearing how you were able to find, you know, employment happily after being self-employed for, for a period of time. Um, you know, what, what struggles do you see, you know, besides the immediate things we're in here, um, when things pick back up and, and work picks back up, what, what kind of common everyday struggles do you have to overcome in your role and in the tile world? Well, I think um, <clears throat> there's many different um factors that come into play and that's why i enjoy it to be honest yeah. with you because there's the client there's a customer that changes on each job it's not cookie cutter as everybody yeah. knows um to how they want their job to look um there's so many different varieties of products we can use to our advantage yeah. the selections of tiles just knowing and giving the value back to the client the, of of the science alone behind installing tile that goes into play before the tile even goes on the floor or on the walls. The knowledge that we have to know in this industry is incredible just in a bathroom situation. Yeah. So, the, you know, the challenge going ahead, there's the normal challenges of the market, the economy that we have to deal with especially now there's a lot of question marks with what's going on, but it's continuing to show the value in who we are as an installer or as a company. And as we know in, in these platforms and in, in this group, um, being a certified tile installer, the value there, the things that we can do on our end to, to just keep having an edge with, with the knowledge and the information um, that we get from these kind of forums and these groups yeah. helps with those challenges. Just it's constant. It's got, but that's like I said to me. That's why I enjoy it. It's always changing. There's always ways to get better. Um, there's always ways to improve. And those are the companies in these situations that are going to survive what's going on because in this time they're taking this time to do what they can to get better at what they're doing. And that's to me is exciting and refreshing and to be a part of something like this. So again, I appreciate um, the invite and to be a part of it. And like I said to you yesterday with the youth, we work with the youth in the trade schools. My biggest thing now after 30 years is to be able to help anybody any way I can. I don't know it yeah. all. And I've never claimed to say that I, that I do. 
but if there's anything I can do to help anyone else as far as an employee or an employer in this industry, that I'm happy yeah. to do it. Well, that was very uh, well put, Mike, and I, I really appreciate those that thought, you know, those thoughts. It, it seems like you you accept the challenges as, you know, uh, something to overcome and something to to better yourself. And, and that's that's the way we've, we've got to do it. Otherwise, uh, life gets dull and, and uh, discouraging. And, and just a little background here for everybody watching. Uh, Mike and I just met, uh, what, yesterday or the day before? Um, Mike reached yes, out to me. He's in my Tile Money Facebook group. And he said, hey, you know, actually, we've been trying to connect for a few days, I, I believe, if I remember correctly. And we finally were right. able to connect. And and that's that's the way it works. So if you want to be interviewed, if you want to take part in one of these things, just reach out to me. I'm easy to get a hold of on, on Instagram. I've got my Facebook group, Tile Money. Um, and so I think with that being said, I don't see any other questions from the audience. So we're going to end this interview here and we're going to have about 15 more minutes of networking. I encourage you all just to get to know one another. Uh, you can hop from table to table. And again, thank you, Mike. And I'm looking forward to uh, networking. Yeah. And then we've got another presentation here in about 20, 25 minutes from now.